Hello everybody, this is Adrienne with Ascension Soul Coaching. It is August the 31st, 2021. So, it's uh, what, Tuesday? So, I don't know if you all have heard, but Hurricane Ida that hit in Louisiana. It's a Category 4 when it hit, one of the strongest hurricanes ever recorded uh, in, in this country. What's happened since then is that it didn't, when I watched a lot of the storm recap, and all the damage that it created, it was nowhere near what happened with Hurricane, Hurricane Katrina. Now, Hurricane Katrina was a category, I think it was category three, two or three, I think it was a three, when it hit. But the levees, which is the dams in Louisiana broke because of all the rainfall, and that caused a devastation on top of the hurricane. That did not happen with Hurricane Ida, that just happened. What has happened is that I think they said 95% of the people in Louisiana are without electricity. They stopped oil production in Louisiana because of the storm coming. A lot of the oil procurement happens down in Louisiana, Texas too, but Texas and Louisiana is two of the biggest ones because they're both right off of the coast. Some of the biggest electrical um, poles come down that run throughout this, the state. And they're saying it's gonna take three to four weeks or more to get the water, the sewage, and electricity back up, which also means that they're having problems with, I'm sure, internet as well. I mean, as soon as the, I, uh, the Hurricane Ida hit, the next day they had the FEMA trucks coming in. And you know, it's like, they were just, I mean, I understand that you could forecast a hurricane out about a week out, 10, 10 days to a week out, right? And so they knew it was gonna, pro they didn't know, it, so this is the thing, they didn't know it was gonna be that bad in the beginning. They thought it was gonna be like a tropical depression. Um, and all of a sudden, in one day, it sped up right before it hit, right? there two before it hit, it sped up and it increased in momentum and, and size. And so they were like, oh my God, we've never seen a hurricane do that before. But FEMA was already there, ready to go. And that lends into the people who are saying that FEMA camps are already set up everywhere. The governor's laws are being changed. The laws of the states are being changed so the governors can um, now just call in the FEMA and the National Guards to help with facilitating the injection. So they're already there, set and ready to go. I want you to just think about this for a second. I mean, this is in any country, not just in America. Let's say with the Hurricane Ida, they're telling people you're not going to have electricity or water or sewage or, or and then there's going to be disruption in our supply chain because the oil wells have whatever in the Gulf, they've shut them down, right? It could take three to four weeks or more to turn them back on, get them back up in operation. And then they say, okay, your house is flooded because of the hurricane. You have to leave. Your house now has been contaminated, let's say. You can come back in three or four weeks and you can, when everything's turned back on and you're more comfortable and now you can come back to your house. But they've gotten you out of your house. Where are you going to live if you're not in your house? More than likely with the rest of the people who left their houses in a FEMA camp or a FEMA trailer. It's what they do for any other hurricane. It's where you. It's where they put people, huge sheltering situ areas, or in a trailer for, that's built by and supported and funded by FEMA. So now let's just say, okay, we're gonna leave because we can't go back there. Our house is flooded, and they say your house is condemned. Now you can't go back at all. You can't go back and get any of your stuff because it's everything in the house is contaminated. Now they've gotten you out your house that you may or may not own. You're living in, and you're being dependent upon the government and FEMA. And now they're saying you are in these mass gatherings because all these other people are also out of their homes, right? They're in each shelter and food and all that. So now for you to be able to take our aid, which is the food and the shelter, you have to take the injection. What if that happens? What if maybe there was a hurricane that was exploded by the uh, government in a way to use it, never let a good disaster go to waste and now there's this way to get people to take the injection because they're dependent on the government just like when they start taking money away from people who are unemployed which is coming up very soon well if you want to continue to get unemployment you have to take the injection what if they say um, the rent moratorium which is ended I think there are judges the Supreme Court overturned it says it's no longer it's not valid and no the government cannot continue to extend these moratoriums. However, the state can offer you the money only if you take the injection. What if that happens? They're already telling you you may not be able to go to work or have your job if you don't take the injection. They're already telling you you may not go to the stores unless you can prove 
that you have the injection. And you cannot go to an event, to school, if you don't have the injection. What would stop them from saying, if you don't take this injection, you can't get any federal aid or state aid from us, and you need it. See, people are going to be put in a situation, I believe. This is where it's all heading. I think this is just a great thing of opportunists, right? And they're going to leave us. For a country or for a world, the UN and all that says, we care about you, we want you, uh, we care about you, we want you to live, we want people to be healthy, we want, we're looking for alpha humanity. But you let people starve because they don't want to take an injection. You'll leave people homeless. There'll be more people homeless because of this, I believe, than what was before because people have the morals and their values where they don't want to take an injection because they don't know what it's going to do they don't know why they're well what you know that the, the, the virus was man-made you know you're trying to do this and you're trying to do that to us it was this control you control everything we do we say we speak you control the internet you told them our prayers you tell it told us when we control whether we go to church or not people are a lot of people leery so just want you to think about that that doesn't that can happen in any country not just in america just think about it. I'm not telling you what to do and not to do. I'm just telling you what if. <clears throat> just what if. So right now I'm off my high horse. I told you what I want to tell you because I told you every time I talk to you I will be drilling this into you because you have to pass on the word. You have to get people aware. They wake up. They have to wake up and say we do not consent and do not go along with this ploy. We've been driven down this alley just like cattle to slaughter. You know, look at the movie 1984 or read the book. There's hints, there's tips, they're telling you. And you've been warned over and over again. You cannot sit around and say you don't see this destruction happening around you. And some of it is man-made and some of it's God-made. Nature, mother's nature. But there's a lot of opportunists. We're using some of this stuff to further their agenda. So just think about that. Just think about it. Open your hearts. Open your minds. Ask God to guide you. So if you want a reading with me, you know how to contact me at ascensionsoulcoaching at gmail.com. And we can talk about anything you want to talk about. I mean, I think today, times, if you have you know issues that you really want to get off your chest, I'm here for you. Anyway, love you people. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.